Hey there, welcome to Melopine Lasers. Today, I have a really interesting laser machine with me. This is the Comgro Comgo Z1 laser. The 5 watt version costs around $260 and is one of the most affordable laser engravers you can get. I'll be doing a full review including the unboxing, assembly and test on multiple materials to see what it can do. Before we move on, I would like to thank Congro for sending us this laser. Just to be clear, this is not a sponsored video. The laser kit arrived in a cardboard box that's 24 by 12 by 8 inches and weighs in under 12 pounds. So let's go ahead and open it up. Everything is neatly packed in here. We have an instruction manual. There are instructions on how to assemble the laser and basic instructions for setting up the software. We have the laser module. This one is the 10 watt module. We also get a pair of safety glasses. Trust me, this is really important. We have the memory stick and card reader. The memory stick contains the device drivers and software. A USB cable. A pack of screws for assembling the laser. A pack of belts, end caps, couple of wrenches and allen keys. Some pieces of plies for making test cuts. The legs for the frame. The power supply unit. X-axis gantry along with the controller. And the extrusions for the frame. That's all of it. Now let's put this together. The first step to assembling this laser is to lay out the extrusions for the frame. I'll start with the two short extrusions. The one with Congro printed on it should go to the front side. Place the extrusion with the printed side facing down and then keep the other short one down with the holes facing up. Make sure the holes are on the outside edge. Now take the longer extrusions and place it in its place to complete the rectangle. These extrusions have a cut on one side of the hole. This is for allowing the screw head to pass through, so make sure these are on the outside edge. Also, make sure the measurement markings are facing downwards with a zero at the front end. Once the pieces are in its place, insert the screws through the holes on the long extrusions and attach them to the short ones. Flip the frame, pick up the gantry and slide it onto the tracks on the longer side of the frame. Attach the controller to the bottom side of the extrusion with Comgro written on it using the screws in the kit. Now we need to install the legs. For that, take the smaller screws and put them through the hole near the leg and place a T-nut on it. Flip the frame once again and slide the T-nut onto the longer extrusion. Make sure the other hole on the leg aligns up with the hole on the shorter extrusion. Once in its place, screw the leg onto the shorter extrusion and tighten the screw with the T-nut. Do this for the remaining three sides as well. Make sure you are using the right leg for each corner. With that done, we'll install the belts. Flip the laser and place it down the right way up. Take out the belts. Now the easiest way to do this is to take one end and pass it under the wheel and out. Do this on the other wheel as well and pull both ends till they are tight. Once the belt is in place, use the square washer and screw to hold it in its place. Make sure there is moderate tension on the belt. Do this for the other side as well. Now remove the laser mount from the gantry by removing the height adjustment screws and use the tiny screws in the kit to attach the laser module with the mount. Once the laser is attached, fix it onto the gantry using the screws you removed. Finally, install the end cap. With that done, we can now connect the wires. First, we'll connect the power and power control wires to the laser. Then, we'll connect each of the stepper motors. Finally, we'll connect the Y axis limit switch. That completes the assembly, and what's left now is to configure it with your PC. Insert the memory stick that came in the kit into the card reader and plug it into your computer. Navigate to the folder with the driver and install it.
After installing the driver, connect the laser to your computer. Open up Device Manager by pressing Windows plus R. Type in devmgmt.msc and hit enter. Now look for the CH340 device and note down its COM port number. In my case, it's COM5. COM Group provides laser gobble for controlling the machine. It's loaded on the memory stick. You will need to install it on your computer. Open up laser gobble. Go to the port selection box on the top and select the COM port number and click connect. If it says alarm over the status bar, click reset and you're good to go. The assembly took me around 10 minutes and here's how the laser engraver looks. One of the first things you want to do on your new laser cutter is to figure out the right settings. I have made a generic test pattern that I will run on some of the materials I have here. I have also made a detailed test pattern to check line spacing, engraving ability and cut settings which I will try on plywood. I have used Lightburn for creating these patterns. I will leave a link to the test pattern files in the description below. I will also be creating videos on how you can make the test patterns on Lightburn, so look out for those. Combro has provided the recommended settings on their support page. You can refer to those and work around the recommended numbers. You can see that at slow speed and high power it burns too much. So that was the test result. You can use this laser without a waste board but I don't want to ruin my favorite table. So I'm using a half inch ply to make the waste board for this. I've cut it into the right size so that the leg will stay flush with the edges. Normally this is enough. You can stop here but I decided to go a bit further and print out a grid pattern on this fly. Combro Z1 is primarily a diode laser engraver that can do some light cutting on thin sheets. 
This is on the affordable side of the price spectrum and costs around $260 on their website for the 5W one. This is the 10W one which costs about $90 more but lets you do everything that the 5W does at nearly twice the speed. Coming to the design aspects, it has an open frame design made of 4 aluminum profiles which keep the weight low. The frame is rigid enough for a laser but then you don't need much rigidity for a laser. Make sure to place it on a firm desk or else it can shake the entire desk when you try to engrave designs that make the head move back and forth a lot like when you engrave letters. Talking about the work area, you get a square engraving area of around 15 and 3 quarter inches on each side which is 400mm by 400mm for those metric fans out there. The work area is comparable to the popular Archer Laser Master 2 but the Comgo costs about $100 less. The open frame design allows you to drop it on top of any workpiece and engrave on it. This means you can engrave on really large sheets provided you divide the design into multiple small sections. One thing that makes this stand out from the other open frame laser engravers of this price point is the Z height. It has a Z height of 4.13 inches which is impressive and comes in handy when working with thick workpieces or if you are using a rotary axis. But then again, if you want to work on workpieces taller than 4 inches, you can always raise the entire laser on some blocks. Another detail I liked about this engraver is that the stepper motor wirings run inside the gantry and are hidden from view. The rest of the wires are covered by a SIP protective jacket and they provide wire holding clamps that ensure that the wiring stays out of the way of the moving parts. A drag chain would have been a good option but that would drive up the price of the laser for the end user. Another impressive thing about this engraver is that it has two stepper motors for driving the y-axis which is fairly rare among the engravers in this price range. The dual motors provide better precision at high engraving speeds and ensure that both sides of the gantry are always in sync. The gantry moves on rollers that run in the channels on the aluminum profile and uses a belt drive mechanism. Congro has done some cost cutting on the rollers here, it's smaller than the ones you typically see. But the repeatability is good. I ran some patterns repeatedly and the Congo was at the same spot each time. Now, talking about the speed, I was able to engrave at a maximum speed of around 196 inches per minute which is about 5000 mm per minute. Even at this price point, it has limit switches on the X and Y axis that help you home the laser head which comes in really handy. It does not have any controls on it except for an on off switch and a couple of LEDs to indicate the power and connection status. An emergency stop switch would have been a nice addition. If you want to stop the laser immediately, you can use the on off switch on the controller. Now getting to the laser module. The laser module I have got here in this kit is a 10 watt diode laser. It has a red shield on the bottom to prevent direct exposure to the laser which is a standard feature in most lasers. But remember that it is just an added protection and you should always wear your safety glasses when operating the laser. The safety goggle provided with the kit is a reliable and good one. If you want a low power laser head, Comgro also has a 5 watt option. The only difference might be the speed at which you could do things and a price difference of around $90. The laser module here uses something called a FAC lens which stands for fast axis collimating lens. When laser diodes generates laser beams, it diverges more in one of the axes than the other. This is due to the design constraints. So in a typical diode laser machine, the spot size would be around 0.25 by 0.15 mm which is like a rectangle. What it means is the spots you make using such a laser will be longer on one axis. FAC lens used on Congo Z1 allows you to have a spot size that is even on both axes and can have a size as small as 0.08 mm. This means that you can put in more dots per inch which improves the quality of the engraving and provides a square spot instead of a rectangular laser spot. This won't seem like much of a difference but if you have worked with other lasers before, you might have noticed that the laser cuts cleaner in one of the axes compared to the other. If you want to compare the spot size with other lasers, the 10 watt X-Tool D1 has a similar spot size and costs around $300 more than the Congo and the Atomstack X7 with a smaller spot size of 0.06mm costs $250 more. Just like most open frame laser engravers, this engraver does not have the autofocus feature so achieving the perfect focal length every time can be a bit tricky. To adjust the focus, you need to loosen up the thumb screws on the mounting plate and move it up or down to get the perfect spot. 
I made this 7 mm thick wood block for focusing the laser quickly. The 5 watt module needs a 2 mm gap between the shield and the surface and the 10 watt module the one I have here needs a 7 mm gap to get the best result. If you have the 5 watt one you can use a nickel to adjust the focus as a nickel is roughly around 2 mm thick. In my opinion they should have come up with an easier way to focus the laser like an adjustment screw or a single lock lever or at least a 7 mm height block. Moving on to the controller, it comes with a 32-bit control board that supports a Wi-Fi module and rotary Z-axis. You can include the rotary axis in the kit for an additional $60 and try engraving some cylindrical workpieces. The Wi-Fi module was included in the kit that I received and can be used to control the engraver through their mobile app. You can drop in the pictures and the laser will engrave them. There are not many adjustments you can do here. You can connect the controller to the computer by using a USB cable and as of now it is only compatible with Lightburn and Laser Gerbil software. Laser Gerbil is a free software and is great for engraving images. I find it better than Lightburn for working with pictures. Lightburn on the other hand is better for cutting applications and engraving lines. You can use it for making the design as well. Lightburn can engrave images but I felt Laser Gerbil is better at it. But on the other aspects, Lightburn is much better. The controller also has an inbuilt gyroscope that automatically stops the laser when it tips over a certain angle or if you bump into it. The good thing here is that it provides resume support so you can continue the engraving after restoring the engraver to its normal position. Comparing it with other similar lasers in the market, Comgro Z1 costs around $100 less than the popular Archer Laser Master 2 and provides higher laser power with a faster engraving speed. The off aero Laser 2 is probably the only other laser engraver in this price range that offers dual Y-axis motors but it has a comparatively smaller engraving area and does not include the limit switches that help you home the laser head. The only other laser engraver that provides the compressed square spot with a size of 0.08 mm is the Atomstack X7, but it costs around $250 more than the Comgro Z1 laser engraver. The low price, large work area, 10 watt laser module, and the host of features make Comgro Z1 the most affordable option compared to other laser engravers at this price point. Talking about support, they do not have an official forum, but they do have an official Facebook page where you can share your queries. The page has over 3500 members from around the world. You can also contact Comgro through email, they usually reply within 24 hours. Their website also provides you with the recommended speed and power settings for cutting and engraving a whole lot of materials. Comgro provides a 30 day return policy and a 1 year warranty for the Comgro Z1 which is really great at this price point. Now if you talk about the assembly, it took me less than 30 minutes to put this together and set it up with my computer. It is super easy. The instruction manual is not well detailed but you can find detailed manuals and assembly videos on their website. To summarize, Comgo Z1 is a great value for money laser engraver. It not only beats the other laser diode engravers on price but also in the spot size it can produce. If you want to do some light cutting along with your usual engraving, I suggest getting the 10 watt laser module. The Comgro Comgo Z1 is a fine laser engraver priced affordably. I would recommend this for beginners and hobbyists for its simplicity in operation. So that's about it. I'll be coming up with lots of reviews, tips, tricks and software tutorials on lasers. So do subscribe to not miss out on any of that. For more interesting stuff on CNC's and lasers, visit mellowpine.com/cnc. Until next time.